Who's the voice of fourth and one? Peggy! Hey! But you show your ass today. I'm going back tomorrow. You're getting your ass booted tomorrow. God. Do you still have that obsession? I want to feel the chill of that trophy again. For the first time head coach, a first time play caller, a first time GM, and expect him to make chicken out of chicken. Imagined ourselves as star players of that time. We won countless Super Bowls in our minds before ever leaving the house. As a bodyguard, will it cost you your job? If you get knocked out. Hell yeah! Uh, six to nine million. But she got that bag without no shoes. If you want it, you can get it for the rest of your life. Why we don't get no bags like that? Come on, we need to. In we honor to. of Rihanna. Uh-huh. Yeah, I had to go barefoot. Ah! My boy probably ain't never even been to Iowa. But he been getting them potato chips. Where is Jake from State Jake in the Do the right thing, NCAA. Reggie is the Heisman Trophy. The opinion. Okay. The speculation. Speculation. Insinuation. If you think Reggie Bush was the only Heisman winner to get any type of compensation, <laughs> welcome to Fourth and One. While I always got it done, bringing facts by the tongue for the rising of the sun. Welcome to Fourth and One. While I always got it done. While I always got it done. I always got it done. Bringing facts by the tongue for the rising of the sun. But this ain't me in the shotgun. Shit. Huh? Huh. Oh. <laughs> this is me in front of TV having a whole lot of e fun. Peggy! What's good, bud? <laughs> you get used to FaceTime. Oh, you love it. You love it. You love it. Let me tell you something. No time, baby. You better act like you got some sense. Okay, okay, just a little bit, though. You better act like you got some sense. The people been asking, Peg. What they been asking, boy? Who is the guy behind the camera, the voice? Who's the voice of fourth and one? Mm -hmm. And without further ado, I present the sum, introduce the others. Emmy Award winning. Come on, now. <laughs> Amari. Garvin. <laughs> Garvin. It's Garvin. Garvin. <laughs> Peggy. Colin. Hey! Fine, I'm happy to get a little bit of love. You earned it, Peg. You oh, earned, you, you earned it, Peg. Thank you, bro. You know, but you show your ass today. I'm going back tomorrow. You're getting your ass booted tomorrow. God. They kept the receipt on it. All right. Shh. They say I couldn't, you know, be well versed, Peg. But here we go, another week, another episode mm -hmm. of Fourth and One. But you gotta, I think you need to talk to somebody because it, we need some calls to action for some old subs, all right? Subs. Yeah, sub, sub, subscribers, because this is what we're doing it for. Make it make sense, Pig. You got your FaceTime. Like well, 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 we over a million now, mm -hmm. but we're trying to go to two mm. and more, okay? Because mm. the next thing, we're trying to get to 10. So I can say it, but it's better when you say it. The people want to see you talk. So basically, them. Pig, you're trying, to do, you're trying to get more plaques. <laughs> I'm trying to get those plaques on plaques well, on plaques. Who is that? Uh, YC and Future? Mm. Racks on racks. But we're we trying to get plaques, plaques on plaques, plaques, okay? I mean, who's doing what we doing? <laughs> Nobody. Give a good content for the mass. Uh-huh. Nobody. I mean, we dropping stuff left and right. Nobody. I mean, bro. Well, damn. Folks is looking forward to a weekly show mm -hmm. that embodies mm -hmm. entertainment, empowerment, mm -hmm. and uh, sports. Duh. <laughs> Hello. Goodbye. Talk to me. I mean, look, uh, we can all, we all, what, we about five minutes I already know, we in. Just gotta get back to it. First down, viral moment of the week. Peggy, what we got? Man, Jason Kelsey has retired. And just like a good brother would, man, in the front row, Travis, El Travador is there. And he got, you know, really emotional. Let's check it out. We did almost everything together. Competed, fought, laughed. Cried and learned from each other. We invented games, imagined ourselves as star players of that time. We'd envision making the winning plays day after day on Kohler Ridge Road. We won countless Super Bowls in our minds before ever leaving the house. Now that's kind of deep, though, man. Would you be crying, or you think Toot would be crying on your day that you ever will retire? 
I think <clears throat> my take on this is this. We need more content humanizing heroes. Mm. We all can relate to this. Yeah. What I see is a younger brother or a brother seeing not just the NFL career, not just the college career, not just the high school career, just the whole football career in this speech. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The life. Life. Because I mean, his whole life has been football until That's this it. time. That's it. That's crazy. And it's a, it's, it's a very real moment that we're not used to seeing. Our last time seeing El Travador outside of, you know, with the with the parade or whatever mm -hmm. was him chest bumping that was the viral moment for him yeah chest bumping and rage with Andy, Andy Reed. yeah but this humanistic moment right here shows that like bro we come from something we got family yeah we got significant others we got moms we got dads we got children and he was just there to support, but you just love to see real emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just be there, just there. Like, yeah, bro, whatever. Like, I feel that. So if my brother were to have a moment or me having a moment, I know that that response or that reaction would kind of be pulled from them. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And it's, and it's, like I said, humanistic action that – Nobody's above. Like, we have real emotions, and it's good to kind of see this. Uh, even more, I, mean, I don't know how many more kudos and points that yeah. Travis, Kelsey, Swift <laughs> can get. But Fair. damn, that, like, that, shit, that shit cool. Like, we all would want to experience that. You know what From I'm saying? From the backyard to the big league. Like, real talk. Fair. So, shout out to the Kelsey family. Mama Kelsey, too. Tucked off in the cut. She you know in the cut, though. She there. Um, yeah, man. It's a beautiful moment. Here we go. Next clip. So we have, up next, we have the richest man in India flew Rihanna in for his son's wedding. We got a few videos just to show you got to have that bag. Hey, yeah. Like, how much money you really got to have to get Rihanna to come out there? Like, for a wedding, you know that got to be a big bag. Big bag. Tell you something. What you guys? What? We love Riri now. Uh huh. ASAP, we love them. <laughs> Baby Riri, all of them. But she got that bag without no shoes. Bruh, six to nine million for that performance, bruh. At a wedding. Barefoot. Barefoot with the wedding cake. I'm saying, I'm After saying all that to say, like, what's up? That was probably the most enjoyable bag she's ever got. Ever gotten. probably got. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> point up, point at him. Make eye contact. Ah, ah, ah. Do the ski. <laughs> if you want it, you can get it for the rest, the rest of your, your life. life. Ooh, ooh. Six to nine million. <laughs> if you want it, you can get, get it for the rest of your life. life. Ooh, like, bro, Anybody else get mad? Anybody else? Who's <laughs> throwing the bouquet? Yeah, my manager right backstage, too. My man, too. Kids. All that. Shit, I can supply a Fenty for all y'all. The groom. Shh. Oh, the bride. Don't she got male Fenty? I think she might have some male Fenty. If not, well, if she don't, she about, about to have, have some. it. Come on, Peg. Talk Why we don't me. get no bags like that? Come on, we need to. In we honor to. of Rihanna. Uh huh. Well, I said, shit, if they getting bags like that, I had to go barefoot. <laughs> go barefoot, you got them, sir. Go barefoot, boo. Hey, keep it ratchet, too, so I wear Mitch Match socks. <laughs> <laughs> She getting barefoot bag. I want them barefoot bag. Barefoot bag. bag. That's the new thing. We ba need some barefoot, barefoot bags. bags. Okay? Next clip. Come on. Kylie. Man, hey, man. I know a lot have been going on with you. And so they've been saying you might need a bodyguard. <laughs> but Lionel Messi's bodyguard, bro. He always on the move, bro. He with him. 
in the middle of the game. That's that's admirable, right? That, there. Bro, he's taking his job serious. Okay, true question, real okay. question. What's up? Will it cost you your job mm -hmm. as a bodyguard? Okay, if you get knocked out. If the bodyguard get knocked if out. If the bodyguard who's guarding you get knocked out or a person, is that worth him losing his job? Hell yeah, because it's like, bro, who the fuck, <laughs> bro? It's like, what the bodyguard get knocked out? It's like, who the fuck you about to do? <laughs> like, you gonna stop me? Real question. Bro. Like, think about it. You you protecting me and you got a glass jaw? Next. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> Bring somebody in with, with some. Because I really be having these type of questions and these yeah. thoughts. I'm like, yeah, you got all these damn muscles. You got all these guns and these, you know what I'm saying, nunchucks and these ninja knives. <laughs> Not the ninja knives. Ninja knives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shh. But you fuck around and you, you protecting me mm -hmm. and I see you get dropped. Don't even come back. And you don't get workers' comp. <laughs> Listen, but he did a he did a good service. It's better his chin than yours. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> okay, it's almost like what would you do if your uh, shield breaks? You asked out. You got to get another one. <laughs> just Bruh, saying. Just I saying. Don't know, if man. if somebody is a bodyguard, shout out to Lana Messi's mm -hmm. bodyguard. But if you get your ass knocked out on duty, on not on duty, on duty. You got to get replaced. Oh this is a this is a situation where we need you to be at your best. Well, incredible Hulk. What type of bodyguard you think you need? Do you think you need to have somebody like that's bigger than you? Like you gonna have to call Shaq for reinforcement. Let right? me tell you something. What uh, <clears throat> in the famous words of uh, my Atlanta constituent, uh huh, Ti. Okay. I don't need no security. Reaching for my jewelry. Get your ass popped quick. Like, come on, man. But I've been hearing the people. Uh, what the people There's been saying? There's been so many referrals in my inbox talking I about, bruh, mean. bruh, bodyguard cam, like, bruh, I got your bit, bruh. You even got old Ped doing his push-ups. Nah, Ped, you just been stay, stay, stay two, behind the camera, Ped. Two and a half. <laughs> yeah. I've been working. Yeah. I've been working, bruh. Peggy, you about 158 pounds soaking wet. But what I keep telling you, Bruce Lee, baby. I flew it like water, baby. Don't don't let don't let it with all due respect, for you. With all due respect, Bruce Lee was an actor. <laughs> Be like water. Cool. Until somebody come in like fire. <laughs> <laughs> like wind. Oh. And earth. <laughs> you gonna need more than water. <laughs> I need you for backup. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Do your damn job, uh, bruh. Shit! If you get the call, uh -huh. you get called up to the uh, to the major leagues. Okay, you better have a strong jaw, mm. cause uh, look, I, I never started peg. But you want what? You gonna do what? I'm gonna finish. It. All right, you gonna clean up. What they say on more to come back. Finish, finish it. Him. Next clip. Yeah. So Caitlin Clark. I mean, she got everybody coming out to her game. She That's just broke hard. The bro, she just broke the record for all-time points. I saw that. I said, yeah. Are we going to talk about the list? Bro, we're going to talk about the list, bro. So, before that, okay. I just got to show. We had Travis Scott. The, pull, Travis, the Scott. Travis Scott. Pull up. Flame, straight up. My boy pulling up in Iowa at that, though. That's hard. That's a big flex. My boy probably ain't never even been to Iowa. Then he done pulled up. But he been getting them potato chips, you if you Jake, know what I mean. You got Jake from State Farm in there. That is Jake from State Jake Farm. Jake in there. And then, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before that, he over there taking pictures afterwards. Afterwards And what she going to do? What she going to Hold on, hold on, hold on. Take another one. But what you about to do now? Hold on. Ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. Whole team in this thing. That's a real one right there. That's a real one, bro. But this what make this what makes superstars superstars, yeah. bro. Like, and I and I shout out to first off, shout out to Caitlin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Travis Scott, that dude embodies turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody has ever seen him perform, 
witnessed live him perform. It's it's another level. When you when you see him perform, Coachella. How long is this the rumper Coachella? It was not a rumper. Okay, put it. <laughs> tell us, look at the camera and tell the camera because it looked like you had a rumper. I was not there. This was a two piece set. Okay. It, it, no, that was a little zesty. <laughs> two piece set. This was a matching set. Okay, a matching. There you go, matching set. Shirt. Shirt. And pants. We need the picture for this one. What a Mashika hat. What a Mashika. Mashika go Mashika. Okay. And man, that bitch stood on to. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? But what I'm saying, Travis Scott is the epitome of allowing people to be them. Uh, one of the dopest things that I've ever seen any performer do, right? Mm -hmm. Even though streakers or like stage runners are like prohibited. Yeah. One time I seen, it was a clip that went around of somebody ran up on stage with Travis Scott. Ran, boom. He didn't panic, he didn't do nothing. He said, hey, 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 come here, boom. And the dude performs with him. What? Like, no, bro. Night, like, he's literally DJ played a song. Boom. Run it you back. Go, if you go run up on this motherfucker, you if you perform. earn the right to get up on this stage, we gonna put on a show. And that guy put on a motherfucking show. But what would you do? Like, have you ever been in a game and a streaker ran on the field? Yeah, Pro Bowl. But media outlets are trained to not video streakers. People don't even know there was a streaker uh, during the Super Bowl. It was one. And he made a bag. Yeah. He bet on himself. That it wouldn't be a streak and then. Yeah, they're gonna have to change that. Damn. Because if they knew, he done, he done cracked the code. <laughs> cracked I'm gonna bet on myself. I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, Travis Scott is on another dimension another of allowing Travis his fan. That's why people love him. Doing shit like this, we ain't expect to see Travis Scott out of all people supporting yeah. fucking Caitlyn, the all time scoring is a walking bucket yeah. for a woman. Fuck it, a walking bucket for a human. Straight up. Straight up! Little flight! Like, Bruh, boom. Quick question. Have you ever been, have you ever performed on stage with anybody? Or who would you want to perform on stage with? Because did you ever jump on with Rick Ross? I did. Um, on stage with Rick Ross? Yeah. In Charlotte? But the, 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 the one that I enjoyed most was Future. You performed with Future? Yeah, Future. Bruh, look at that Look, you see how the subtle flip, man. It, it, the one with the most for future. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. Everybody ain't able. Let me tell you something, bro. Future came to Charlotte 2015. Okay. The whole team was up there. Uh huh. Like, right. when, when the motherfucker came out with the album title, What a Time to Be Alive. Uh huh. I, re I resonated with that. Yeah, that was for you. That was listen. Super Future, what Pluto. A time Shout out to Pluto. To be alive. And that. Bro, I can't believe it. But that was like Purple Rain Future. Yeah, oh purple yeah. Purple Rain, Purple Rain, Purple Rain. I need a girlfriend. I didn't need a girlfriend. See, that's the thing that they don't, they don't like to understand about me. Come on, say what? Like, I ain't let these like change me. You ah. feel me? I'm just a little, you know what I'm saying, ratchet professional motherfucker from College Park. You know mm. what I'm saying? The G side of College Park. Kali. Uh, and it was a time to be had, Peg. Did you perform March Madness? That's like one of my uh -uh. favorite future songs. Okay. No, nah, it's, it's like everybody's. But did your Mashika hat stay on during the performance? Did it. <laughs> but I ain't going to cap, though. During that time, I was wearing, like, I, that was BM before Mashika. Oh. I was heavy with Don C, though. Don like, C? The, them Don C. Oh, the, Mitchell and uh, S, just them Don snake, hats. Yeah, them, them snake skin fuckers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pass them on Bro, me. I got at least, call, call me Cap. Okay. If I'm lying to you, I got I'm at call least you 150 Don C hats. For Snake, one Python, head, huh? like all, like that's where this derived from. Like mm. I would wear caps. That was my thing. In college, I would wear ball caps. It was like a thing. And any, for people who don't necessarily have money, it's the essential. Let me, story time. Oh, Lord. It's, it is a story. it's a essential time. Okay. When, if you were a true hat wearer, okay. you got to have these three hats. <laughs> okay, break it down then, boo. Being from Atlanta, you got to have an Atlanta Braves hat. Okay, a Braves number one. You see what I'm saying? You got to have a Yankee fitted. A uh, blue Yankees fitted, yes. You know what I'm saying? And then the third one is going to be where you from. Like So that could be Atlanta, Atlanta Braves. You got the Tigers, Detroit. Mm -hmm. You got all this and all that. But that whatever the third one is is where you from, like 
Where you originally from? Now you start getting into all them wacky colors. That's uh, subjective to what type of outfit you got on. Okay. Okay. But for all can't miss opportunities, a all blue Yankee. Who? I made a Yankee hat more famous than a Yankee, Yankee can. can. Over your hat. Come on, bro. Then I had like too many people started wearing the hat, so then I was like, "Look." Then you I'm had to switch it up to the what? Machine, machine gun, bro. Like, come on, grown man, boo. Okay. You know, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. <laughs> and I did childlike things. Uh -huh. Now I'm grown, gotta step it up. Well, machine well, fedoras. Well. Here on now. Come on now. To infinity and beyond. Next clip. Here we go. Second down. Questionable call of the week. Let's see what we got. But a big questionable call in the past few days has been Russell Wilson being released from the Broncos. Let's check this video out. I don't think that Greeny is making excuses for Russell Wilson. I think the bottom line is when you bring in a quarterback of that caliber and you cater it to him, you have mm. to fully cater it to him, not put him in an offense for the first time head coach, a first time play caller, a first time GM and a young team and expect him to make Chicken, how the chicken shit? That's we're, the bottom line. So that's not. We're gonna find out to hey. It's the truth of his situation. So okay. you think he was making chicken out of chicken shit? Should they have released? So many questions that need answers. Yeah. They should have released him. I think this ain't the first time somebody done been in a bad situation. <laughs> but to the normal person, what? The fan sees, mm -hmm. the person that's looking outside the bubble. Yeah. What they see, what they think is, even though you had chicken shit, you had a golden <clears throat> bag, a heavyweight bag. Okay. So now it's your job to make that chicken shit filet mignon. Mm. Straight up. You, you have to compensate all the- Overcompensate. For all the insufficiencies that we have. That bag that you got, that's supposed to cover up what we don't have. But you, as anybody else, know, like sometimes you you could do your magic for sure. But it's still hard to get it rocking and Understood, rolling. Peggy. Mm -hmm. With that bag, I'm just speaking okay. from the from that the truth. Okay. Of the situation, this is not shade or hate towards Russell Wilson. Okay. Russell Wilson was in a position where nobody cared what the situation was that you were you were in. You it wasn't as bad as it you had two respectable talented receivers that could and can beat man to man. Okay. So, a running sustainable running game. Mhm. Mm cool. And even if you were to ask Russell he knew he didn't play his best football in Denver, which he was getting paid to play his best, best football. football. So contrary to what you may believe, contrary to what you may look on, on the stat, stat sheet, mm -hmm. I can't agree with Robert Griffin here, but with what you are paid, a top tier talent has to bring others up mm -hmm and compensate for any other insufficiencies. So him being released comes to no surprise. It was just bound to happen. Well, do you think it was surprising to you and not him? Because right here with Brandon Marshall, your constituent, mm -hmm. he said otherwise. Let's see what he said real quick. So you sitting here at 35, you say you feel the best you've ever felt. Do you still have that obsession? I got more fire than ever, honestly, especially if over the past two years of what I've gone through, whether if it's in Denver or somewhere else, I, I hope it's in Denver. You know, I hope I get to finish there. I, I committed there, I wanted to be there. You know, I wanna be there. For me, it's about winning. Over the next five years, I wanna to win too. I wanna to feel the chill of that trophy again. You know, I, I love the city and everything else, but you know, you also wanna be a place that, that wants you too, so. That's an oxymoron, pause it, that's an oxymoron. I don't think a lot of people in Denver want Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. One of them being Sean Payne. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. Come on. Talk to me. I'm trying to. I'm picking up. <laughs> so that's what he's supposed to say. I want to be there. Like, 
these are all things that you're supposed to, to say. say. Yeah, textbook. I don't think that that's how he really feels. Yeah. Because even that. He like, can't. Yeah. He's still at this point in time. He's still. This was prior to the releasing of him. Mm -hmm. So now you ask, is that anybody who really knows the situation? No. Like ask him off the record. Yeah. And I guarantee you. He's like, bro, I want to get the fuck out of there. I want to go somewhere that I'm that I'm wanted. He don't feel wanted in, yeah. in 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 Denver, bro. It's evident. You got pulled. You got pulled. But did, got is benched. that how you felt in New England? Did you That's think they was make this about me? Okay, this ain't about me. We just fought them because now I don't want somebody to say, say like, why this always got to get back to Cam in the win. Like, bro, true. this ain't the first quarterback that's been in a fucked up situation. It's a lot of man. Yeah, a, a lot. Every year. You see what I'm saying? Shit, RG3 was in a fucked up situation if, you, if, we, if we keep it at the big buck. Mm -hmm. Him and Kirk, he was in a fucked up situation. Shit, on draft night. <laughs> this ain't no newness where, like, Russell Wilson is just did something or we've observed him being in a situation that it's not. Like, we're accustomed to being in this situation. Like, yeah. cool. It's just what you got to do. But the great ones, when you think about – the Tom Brady's, when you think about the Aaron Rodgers, when you think about, shit, fucking Patrick Mahomes, what he was able to do this year. He didn't have elite receiver talent. He, with that bag that he got, don't worry about it. You got to make it elite. I'll pick it up. I'm, I'll, I'll make the wrongs right. And that's what Denver was asking from Russell Wilson. Make our wrongs right. And too many times he did not do that. There were some times where he did. But he knows he didn't play his best football in Denver, and it cost him his job. I can say that. In New England, I didn't play my best, and it cost me an opportunity. In, in, in Carolina, I didn't play the name of the, the most important statistic in all of sports. Fuck passing percentage. Fuck passing yards. Throwing touchdowns. Interception ratio. Blitz. You know, throwing against the – it's did you win? Yeah. In all the sports, you're talking about basketball, baseball, golf, Table cricket. Tennis. Hockey. Mm -hmm. Anything. Bob sledding, <laughs> damn it. Did you win? All that other shit. Man, we don't give a damn about that. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it comes to no surprise about that. And me knowing the situation of a competitor, not knowing Russell Wilson personally, but observing his situation, he knows he didn't play his best football. Yeah. And I think that's what's eating him the most. Mm -hmm. At 35 years old, I don't know if he gets another opportunity. He probably thinks he will. Shit, I hope he, you know, we love a vengeance tour. Yeah. But shit, that's not, he ain't getting no younger. Yeah, that's true. Shit, a motherfucker older than me. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Go on out there. But he wants to win. He wants to, he wants to, it's unsettling for him to have his career end like that. Like this, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Disrespect. So he want to prove more than anything. So if he gets an opportunity to prove that, I think he's going to accept it as any competitor would. Mm -hmm. Next clip. So, question of the day. I don't know if, if you what you heard that just happened at Six Flags. There's just a lot going on, a lot of commotion. Um, this in Atlanta? Atlanta, Six Flags. Would you take your kids there? <clears throat> There's like a riot, shooting, all this stuff going shooting? on. Shooting? Not in Six Flags, but it happened right outside, but... Fighting. No, man. This was on opening. Look at my man with the. Look at my man over there. The song was. I mean, the song was. The aggressive. song was. Yeah, it was the song. So you already know, like, what they call it. It's a genre of music that they call it, Peg. They, it's drill music. Drill. They trying to drill some shit. And some girl was getting her shit drilled. Yeah. And what your it's my so, man didn't put his clamper down to break up the. He ain't really want to break up the fight. He didn't. He ain't. He, he didn't, didn't sign want up none for of that. that smoke. He didn't sign up for that. But <laughs> we got to do better, people. We got to do better. Uh, and I, adults, get a hold of your damn kids. And this was opening night of, of Six Flags. Man, look. But these teenagers, man, it's getting it's getting out of hand. I know that's your ministry because they even shut down. Spring break at Miami. They cut that out for a team. Do you blame them? I don't. Because any spring break, the Cancun, the Panama City, or Miami. It's going crazy. Tell you something. When you start seeing – man, look, I'll give you one better. What's up? Right? Dak Prescott, a couple years ago when he went – I think he was still in college. His He got stabbed. 
What? Oh, I do remember Where you that. Been, yes. Bro. Like, bro, Pan yeah. it's a lot of testosterone, masculine, alpha, strong, bet not try me energy walking around with a bunch of strangers. What you think gonna happen? It's in the music, it's in the content, it's in whatever. The mischievous lick. Like, my daughter told me about that, bro, and it was so like, <gasps> clenching my pearls. <laughs> But these kids don't give no damn about nothing. None, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And shit, it is what it is. So I don't blame them for stopping that shit. They need to. They need to get a grip of it because somebody going to get hurt. And I would hate for somebody to get a call, a parent to get a call to say, Miss so-and-so, Mr. so-and-so, we need you to come down to identify if this is your child or not. And I like six feelings. Yeah, with your childish ass. You got to put childish things away, Peggy. Man, don't, don't act like you don't, you don't do no Six Flags. Peggy, I have not enjoyed Six Flags in a relatively long time because of my size. I am 6'5", 260 on pounds. Okay. I, I can't, I'm not comfortable sitting in those seats. I probably be like three seats. The Georgia Scorch would go crazy. But now you're going to hate on the regular the, size folk. Now, now I can't enjoy roller coasters because you can't. Give me my ball back. If I can't, y'all ain't picking me to play? Shit, y'all ain't going to play with my ball? Y'all can play with another ball. Play with a tennis ball, y'all, man. Shit, you ain't going to play with my ball. So, in, in translation, if y'all want me to go to Six Flags, fuck Six Flags. Bro, oh, God. Shit. If I can't damn enjoy the damn fun, but now I sit back. As take the parent, kids. I could take the kids. I Thank you. Enjoy the slushy. Enjoy the little Minute Maid. And Uncle little, Peggy going to rise with him. Yeah, go on, Peggy. Go on with the little splishy, splashy. <laughs> take your little nieces and nephews. You know what I'm saying? Have a blast. Take your little floaty out there with you, too. I'm that floaty. You know what I'm saying? Next clip. Third down. Cam approved, or as, as we like to call it here on 4th and 1, boogie approved. Let's see what we got. So we got uh, Dak with the new cut. That's a new cut? That's the new cut for Dak. With he the always had like a low Caesar. Is he that got a Caesar? that one. That's like a Kobe one type like that. Yeah. That low blow. With the goatee. With the goatee. It's connecting. It is connecting. You better not have another Beijing on there. You better not have another pencil on there. A black. You know what I mean? It's all good. Ain't nothing wrong with a little black. Some brothers struggling. Shit. We all can't have locks. What's up? Hell yeah, the Carlos <laughs> The Carlos Boozer. Oh. Shit. But y'all damn barbers getting out of hand with all these damn uh, them windbreaker sheets. What they do? Two chain. Oh yeah, you got a two chain barber. You know what I'm barber sheet. You, see, right, you ever man. seen the fake Gucci ones or the Louis ones? Oh, come on, we gotta stop all that shit. <laughs> that shit still twenty dollars. <laughs> still the same twenty. Same twenty. It's, 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 it's rubbing it, off it, after it, after it, three cuts. You know what I mean? Got stains on it. Got you know some COVID in there. But but what kind of cut did Boogie get when he used to go to the barber shop? <laughs> Number four. <laughs> <laughs> What's the number four? Let me get that four. You used to look at the wall with all the people heads yeah, on there? Just tape a fade, bro. Tape a fade? Tape a fade. But that motherfucking lineup got to be sharp. <laughs> I mean, that bitch. You touch that bitch, you're going to bleed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I never had, I never had waves. I never was the guy that wore the do-rag. You ain't never rocked the do-rag? I couldn't. I ain't had no, like. So you had the low I ain't had no good grade, bro. I'm from Wakanda, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Pop gave me a lot of things. He ain't giving no good grade. Not the good grade. Yeah, you know I'm saying we gonna keep this censored too. So <laughs> I, I, I'm grateful for it. Everything I'm, I'm Pop, blessed by the best. You know what I'm saying, okay. but he ain't give me no good grade, amongst other things. But what he did give me, I did a lot with, with the hand that I got dealt. Okay. Man. See what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, kind of all all blessings with joy. Uh -huh. Next clip. He got that motherfucking yeah, uh, training day going yeah. on. Some of the Thunder Stars start pulling out some of their fits, man. You got SGA and then Jalen Williams. He got the training day. Let me see what Williams had going on. Just that slow bop with the all leather. Man, this this ain't really this training day with a mix of little little uh, little. Uh, uh, Who is this? This right here is uh, Jalen Williams, but this are uh, both of them from the Thunders, Thunder. Um, but my dog uh, Williams. They on the same team. On the same team. That's a no no, bro. But hey, my, my other boy giving me Bernie Mac. That gave me like a little Bernie Mac leather jacket, though. But 
Come on, bro. What you got going on? Peggy. What's up? Let me bro? teach you something. Come on. Let, let me, me learn. Learn me something. Learn me, me something now. Me, let me learn you something. Okay. It's your strut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you got somewhere to go. Or you always on time. You gotta have a little bop. I'm the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Ooh, Party that's... don't start to I, I get, get in. You, you, you dig <laughs> what I'm saying? You hear me knocking? <laughs> well, let me in. Come on now. Come that on. strut ain't up the pop. That ain't that. You ain't gotta work on your strut, bro. You gotta bruh. work on your strut, bro. You gotta, I mean, you gotta, uh. You can't have a big the neck with the You gotta knock knees, oh, wearing man. a size 20. Like, I see what you tried to do. You got the D'Angelo braids. You got How does it feel? Oh, nah, this, this, it's, look, I'm yeah. not approving that because it's the, it's the strut. It's the strut, bro. You got, you got to be spouty. You dig what I'm saying? Say what it got to be? Spouty. <laughs> you got to hold that thing. Say what? Spout. Look, it ain't S P. It's S H H H P. You know what I'm saying? Spouty. <laughs> and then you got to take the T I. It's with the D. <laughs> Gotta be spouty, bro. Spouty. Yeah, when you get that, uh, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Just a little, pop, yeah, little pop. Uh, you know Ooh, what I mean. The fake look away, <laughs> like somebody calling your name. <laughs> oh, bro, point him out. You know what I'm saying? Pop the collar and point him out. There you go, boo. You know what I'm saying? It's just a look. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody calling your goddamn name. No. Then you want to stand on top of them motherfuckers. Then you can. Yeah. Yeah. Stand on them, boo. Standing on business. That's when your glasses standing on business. Come on. You got to stand on top of them. Like, yeah. hey. Hey. Because you got them, them, them blacked out for. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you know what I'm saying? They want to so you know gotta, what you're looking at. You got to commit Sometimes to Sometimes you got to remind them who you're looking at. Okay. You. <laughs> That's you, girl. Now I'm gone. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, bro. It's all in the walk, bro. It's it ain't, the it ain't on you. It's in ya. Well, what my boy say, you gotta have some in ya. You gotta eat some in ya, nigga. Damn. Kenny done said eat I, some I, I, That ain't boogie approved right there, that bro. You gotta work on that, 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 that walk, you yeah, feel me? It's all walk, in the walk. Walk, 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 walk. Chill, 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 chill. Uh. Walking and sliding and stepping. Ooh. Shout out to Kodak, man. Next clip. We gotta get into them fan questions. So we open it up to the fans. And so we got a few fan questions uh, for today. Josh Fry said, as a quarterback, do you prefer pass catchers that can separate or bigger body guys that can outmuscle at the catch point? Big receiver, smaller receiver, quick receiver. A Ted Ginn or, or a Benji, I guess. No. He's like... Now you gotta you gotta have more arsenal, like tools in your bag. You feel me? Like I think about the game has changed. Like we've evolved as a receiver. That position has changed. Back okay. in the day, you had the Plexico Burris, the Anquan Boldens, uh -huh. the Larry Fitzgerald. Like those guys could move, but they were bigger receivers. And, and Larry Fitzgerald probably not a good uh, example here because he was a possession receiver. Yeah, he was. Yeah. But he was six three. Uh, and can move, you, you know what I'm saying? Now, Larry Fitzgerald's body frame is, in essence, a tight end. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? A hybrid tight end. Um, yeah, the Kelvin Benjamin, um, you know, those big body guys. But in on the opposite, you see a guy like Cooper Cup, mm -hmm. probably going to run a 4'6", four, 4'7", four, but that motherfucker going to stay open. Very savvy. You like a Jules. Like Jewel, hell yeah, like a Julian yeah, Edelman, guys that are just, they understand what they can do and they understand what they can't do. Mm -hmm. And any type of mastery, you have to understand what you can't do. Elite, right? Since we're talking about Bruce Lee, Bruce <laughs> Lee said, a master of many is a master of none. Mm. So stick to your gun. To answer your question, Mr. Fry, I will go with um, possession receiver, Mid grade, mid size, whatever, and the IQ has to be there. Okay. There's not a lot of guy. I don't think that that's an overlooked feature in receivers, tight ends, running backs. When I see Christian McCaffrey, when I see the Travis Kelseys, when I see the Rob Gronkowski's, the Greg Olsons, the um, the Gates, 
the um, Tony Gonzalez, like these guys really understood what defenses was trying to do. And no matter what the route tells me to do, I'm still going to play football. And my IQ, like cover two, this is the hot spots in this defense that even though I have an over route, I'm open right now. So mm -hmm. why the hell I'm going to run to get cover? Those type of connections, well, as we call it, that Wi-Fi boom. Gotta be booming. You dig what I'm saying? And I'll take that receiver any day. So real quick, Coach Brown mm -hmm. said, where do you see 707 evolving in the future? And what is one thing you would do to make it more better to level the competition of play? Um, I think 707 will keep getting uh, popularized year in and year out. Uh, I think for the people who are not abreast to what 707 is, it mm -hmm. is really a pass-centric developmental platform for players to hone in on their craft, especially for quarterbacks. Anticipation, understanding uh, coverages, understanding just, um, you know, getting in and out of zones, like seeing what defenses is trying to do. Yeah. Um, but the more platforms that they have to give kids extra opportunities to get recruited, 707 is it. it. It's almost like basketball AAU. So yeah. kids have garnered scholarship offers by going on the AAU circuit more so than their own high school. Yeah, team, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for those guys who may be on a very run first football team. They can the, see what's in their Now package. they have opportunities to show I'm just not a pass or run blocking receiver. I can really catch and I can really run routes. That's fact. So. Mother Taker. Said, if you were to add a former teammate to the fourth and one podcast, which one would it be? I think Josh Norman would be perfect. What you think, Cam? Polished? I got two for you. You got if, two. If I had to, if I had to go a more polished teammate, Greg Olson. Greg. He looking for a job too. Hey, Gio, bring your ass on God. down here to fourth and one. one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just to kick shit uh -huh. and talk shit, Thomas Davis. Oh, T D gonna talk that shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, y'all yeah, been like, talking shit for days. T D can't fuck with me. He never could fuck with me. <laughs> oh, and when he see this, I don't give no damn. He gonna be talking shit. Uh, look, he don't even wear the pants in his relationship. Oh no. I gotta report to Kelly. Kelly, tell your man, he can't fuck with me. <laughs> but that's all a joke. That's our relationship. Yeah. But yeah. It's either uh, Greg Olson or, or Thomas Davis. So Rod King of Slim. Or, or matter of fact, <laughs> God, I'll you. give you a third one. What's the third? To get to be funny, uh -huh. Lou Young. Lou. Shout out to Lou. Lou that, that was an ex-teammate of mine. That is an ex-teammate. So I gave you three, Pat. You gave me three. Greg Olson. For the more polished look, okay. we just kicking shit, talking shit, TD. TD. But if we want to be funny, Lou Young. Lou, Lou, Lou Young was a part of that 2015 um, Carolina Panthers team. So y'all know him as a comedic relief. I know him as a football player. Mm. Yeah. Damn. So. Rog King of Slams tweeted, Xavier Worthy just broke a, the 40-yard dash record. In your opinion, how much does speed translate to success in the NFL? Nothing. None, yeah. If you run fast, you still got to catch, huh? Or you still got to do everything. Else. Okay, I ask you. We got our one of our producers here on this show, Brendan Cole. Brendan Cole. Put you on the hot seat. Speed. Right. What did Tyreek Hill run in the forty? Four three. No. Nobody knows. See what I'm saying? That, that, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm saying oh, that matter. is just how people use, they think running a 40, it's just entertainment. Because my man, what's my man that went to the bingo? Ross. Ross. Ross lost. And it's sad. Yeah. Because it just don't always translate yeah. to success. I'll take a guy that's quick. Mm -hmm. Or quicker than fast. Mm. That's a difference. Because you're not running just straight up and down. Hell no. Nah, it's almost like, how far can you throw? I seen it. Like, they was doing one of the damn things where it's like, how hard can you throw? 
Like oh, the yeah, fast. yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit don't fucking matter. Don't nobody, don't no real receiver want to catch a 60 miles per hour <laughs> slant route. Like, the fuck are we doing? <laughs> And there's really no ch- – That's a heater. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, guys, when you ask receivers, <laughs> pass catchers, what they like, it's a catchable pass. Yeah. See what I'm saying? And there's not a lot of times – I think a, a player who has probably the strongest arm in the league is Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. But you will never know it on a regular game yeah. situation. Him throwing the ball – I and, and I'm just shooting in the dark here. Okay. Last year's probably – deepest ball in the air probably was about 50 yards like the highest point okay catch touchdown yeah most catches are caught within 30 40 yards and then they run for an 80 yard yeah. touchdown because if you bombing it like that that shit probably gonna get picked hail mary yeah One, two, three. you know what i'm saying and if you're throwing hail marys that means you're losing <laughs> okay like there's not that's not that's not a translatable Statist- like there's not a the football is not a straight line sport. Game, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. A lot of guys are s- like fast, straight ahead, but football is stop, start, transition, lateral movement. Yeah. So I'm gonna take a guy that's quicker <clears throat> than fast. fast. You see what I'm saying? Nah, I'm not saying. Oh boy, worthy, yeah, ain't gonna be wor- worthy. Ain't gonna be worthy. worthy. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if it's just really gonna come down to him like he you got some receivers that you will never see that speed because yeah. they're gonna jam the shit out of his so ass you probably paying attention to the shuttle more than the 40. it's, it's a lot it's, like, it's, it's the yak it's the yak can we get drunk off the yak <laughs> off the yards after the catch what yeah. you what you doing with that fuck all that straight line speed yeah can you get busy? This ain't no drag race. No, it ain't. This ain't no damn baton, you know, whatever. When I put this, when they put the football in your hands. What you gonna do with What it? you gonna do with it? Here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. Main segment, Newton's Law, Peggy. Couldn't wait for this one. Mm-hmm. Talk to me. What we got? Man, we got a lot. Oh, yeah. We got a lot. We got a lot. We got a lot coming up. So, you know your boy. Yeah, yep. Johnny Football. We still waiting on him to get on now, Johnny. We ain't yep. forgot about you. Come on, Johnny Football. Johnny had a tweet in the media that's been going crazy recently. Johnny Football tweeted, after careful thought and consideration, I will be humbly removing myself from the Heisman Trophy ceremony until the Reggie Bush gets his trophy back. It doesn't sit right with me, with my morals and values, that he can't be on that stage with us every year. Reggie is the Heisman Trophy. Do the right thing, NCAA. The ball is in your court. Much love, JM2, Manziel. And then uh, the last two Heisman Trophy winners made a combined of $12 million last year. $12 million. $12 million. But Reggie can't get his trophy back. Mm. So your boy. uh, The response, they had a response. He said it wasn't necessarily the Heisman. It was the. Association. It was the yeah. So it was association. So uh, he sent in a letter to like the Heisman and NCAA. They they hit him back. Johnny Manziel did. No, Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush. Reggie did, okay. Bush went back to try to get his Heisman after he turned it in. So he sent the letter. They denied his request, um, and they said it was because uh, institutional penalty. So it wasn't them. It was more like the institutional penalty with USC um, during that time. Peggy. So, what's up, bud? Just sit back. Let me make this point real quick. Make it make your point. Make it make sense for me. Okay. It, it ain't a lot of people that can relate to future. Mm-hmm. When they, what a time to be alive. Okay. When, when Reggie Bush, uh, when Reggie, Reginald, mm-hmm. Cortez Bush. Not Cortez. You know what I'm saying? Was at the University of Southern California. Mm-hmm. If you think... He was the only, only one person getting compensated for his skill set to that university. <laughs> you a motherfucking fool. <laughs> I mean, listen, let me. And I ain't, these are all insinuations mm-hmm. here. I don't know this to be a fact. I'm just speaking what I know that could be my opinion. Okay. You got Lindell White, mm-hmm. Matt Leinart, 
Matt Lina, yeah. Steve Smith. Not Carolina <sighs> Steve Smith, yeah. but. That's Steve Smith. Yeah, I got you. Mike Williams. Dwayne, Dwayne Jarrett. I'm Dwayne sorry. Jarrett. Dwayne Jarrett. And it, not even to mention the defense. And shout out to fellow teammate Ryan Khalil. Right? Probably one of the best put together college team. football teams we've seen in the 21st century. Yeah. They up there. No, nah, that's not to discredit the LSU team. That's not to discredit the Florida State team. That's not to discredit Miami or any Even other great. Florida. Florida, correct. Boom. But that team assembled during <laughs> that year. If y'all think Reggie Bush was the only person <laughs> that was getting any type of financial compensation, you mm -hmm. are out of your rabbit ass mind. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take it a step further. Take another step there, bud. Still speaking on opinions. Okay. Speculation. Speculation. Insinuations. Okay, all the Asians. I don't give a damn what association <laughs> you pulling from or whatever accreditation, how, whatever. If you think Reggie Bush uh -huh. was the only Heisman winner to get any type of comp compensation <laughs> and that great prestige of the award. Yeah. Come on now, people. What EA say? EA Sports. It's in the game. <laughs> like, <laughs> players, boosters go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Let's not act like this ain't the unspoken word in college sports. So, when Johnny Football says, do the right thing, let's put this into perspective here. Reggie Bush had impact. Mm-hmm. Reggie Bush had skill set. Mm -hmm. Reggie Bush had everything to embody him being a Heisman Trophy winner. Correct. And to this point, you can't negate what he did on the field. Take out you penalizing him for what he did off, off the, the field. field. Yeah. What he did on the field was worthy enough for him to win the Heisman. And I can see if he was taking like performance enhancing that's, drugs. That's or that's you that's know my what next saying? point, Peggy. The man wasn't taking performance enhancing drugs. He wasn't taking, he wasn't cheating. He wasn't, you know, doing any illegal betting. He wasn't, he was trying to survive as any college athlete, student athlete, was trying to do. So you hate the man because of that? You take, you, you strip him from the most prestigious award of all of football or really all of sports because of what he made a mistake of doing? Cool, like, boom. Time cures all. Mm -hmm. And I hope in my lifetime okay. I'm able mm -hmm. to see the day Reggie Bush gets his Heisman Trophy back. Because if you're asking me, Ped, I up? ain't been back to the Heisman. And I was going to ask you because it's like, I don't see My, my, my reason is a little different. My Reggie, reason is a little different. And it has nothing to do. with up on some mess that yeah, ain't yeah, true. Yeah, it, was, it had nothing to do with how they did Reggie. My situation is a little different. So why don't Cam come back for that? Uh, during the biggest moment of my life, okay, I wanted to share that moment with the people who poured into me the most. Mm -hmm. That's my mother. That's my father. Mm -hmm. That's my support and cast. Right? Yeah. I'm not who I am today without the investment, the time, energy, financials that my parents invested in me mm -hmm. to play the game of football. It was told to my father that it's in your best interest to not attend. Mm. And I still take that to heart. Because I considered it one year to go back. Mm. And I had to say to myself, it's like, well, first of all, I don't really give a fuck about awards. That's, that's something that's subjective and opinionated for. When you think about any type of awards, Oscars, it, 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 it's, it's a vote. Yeah, correct. Of, of, of humans, of people, mm -hmm. right? And my thing during that time, I just wanted to share it with, with people who loved me before the world even knew me. Mm. And you strip that moment. I, I, I'll take you back. That night when I won a Heisman. Okay. I was real brief. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just wanted to, 
extremely nervous, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to hug my dad. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I just wanted to be around him. Like, because he poured into me a vision, a way of life, a way of thinking, the discipline, the, the sacrifice. When I was seven, when I was eight, when I was 13, when I was 14, when I went through heartache, pain, and you take him away? Shit, yeah. that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing still to this day for my family. Not for my first name, for my last name. Correct. And I didn't like how they handled that. So everybody always questions like, well, why we don't ever see Cam at the Heisman house? He's like, no, nah, bro. I'm just not a plus one type of guy. Bro, I got eight kids, dog. Talk to me. If y'all want to do it right, bro. That's a house. What the fuck I look like just going there with me and a plus one? Like, if you're not going to give no plus 10 for me, from all my kids to be able to show like, yo, this is what your dad did. Feel me? I ain't coming. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go. Because there's some folks that didn't want me to win the no. award anyway. anyway. I've been kicked out of better places. places. Come nah, on nah, nah, nah. But, but in all seriousness, the Heisman Trophy is the most prestigious collegiate award. Correct. Some would say the most prestigious Football award. Not a lot of people have I won, won that. Yeah, that's like that's a, that's a tenure of where you, in college, mm. you have the most polarizing award. Reggie Bush won that fair and square. Yeah. Not barring his off the field antics or what happened from an ill will person to bring it to the forefront. Cool. That's whatever. If y'all think. Reggie Bush's family was the only family that has ever received any compensation from a house, a car, money. Hey, look, come on, dog. They, are, they can never admit it. They will never admit it. It's not for you to get caught. Mm -hmm. But people, now nah, it's legal for nah, people. Now everybody doing it. You can get You know paid. what I'm saying? And that's fucking up the game. But the thing is, it's like even speculation. Like, there's speculation with you. It didn't happen, but they speculated. They with speculated, him, man. Like I went just... through so much. It was funny because, like, still to this day, people think I took money. Yeah. And the money, the dollar amount that they said that I was speculated of taking, it was $200,000. Oh, fuck, I ain't never seen $200,000. Not at that time of my life. Yeah. <laughs> So where is that? Where the fuck? Man, bro, I remember this shit like it was yesterday. Gene Chizik, head coach of the Auburn Tigers at that time when I was there. <laughs> he said he wanted to have a conversation with me and my parents after a game. This was like, we played on Saturday, so we came in Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting down in his office, myself, my mom, my dad, and then Gene, was, Coach Chizik was sitting across from us. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, it was some... You know, you're about to go into an investigation that the NCAA feels as if that somebody benefited from money. Mm -hmm. So the question was asked, well, how much money? He said $200,000. What? There was a pause. I looked at my mom. <laughs> <laughs> like we laughed. Yeah. But we was laughing at him. He wasn't laughing. It was like, are you serious? Like 200000 Boom, but... For the people, they don't know. They still think he took money. Yeah. They're like, bro, $200,000. In my culture, you're going to see that shit so yeah, way. You're going to see it. Bro. Walk in there with a little chain, I'm trying a to car, tell you, a car. Something at the some house. Some enhancements to the house. Damn, you know, can't my we father, get this big screen? You know what I'm saying? My father still is a preacher to this day and was then, too. Like, you will see it, some enhancements to the church. Yeah. Uh, some type of lifestyle upgrade. Correct. Man, motherfucker looked at <laughs> years and years of bank statements. It was almost embarrassing to provide. <laughs> Motherfucker, we broke. <laughs> Pressing the shift button. Holding the shift button. B-R-O-K-E. Exclamation point. We broke. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, bro, still handled business. Mm -hmm. But me going through that makes the narratives know like y'all don't think somebody else really make had money yeah. by going to a university and if anything he deserved it let's just keep it above for did. what he gave usc Bruh. the the bush push bro the excitement motherfucker had will Farrell at the game motherfucker everybody was everybody was going to the game bro yeah y'all tripping he was dating a superstar in college a, a college bro like, think about this. Bro, he was more popular. It's speculated. It's speculated. Speculated. In a dorm 
room or right. a on the college campus in one dorm or one apartment. It was speculated. Just speculation. One of his teammates was dating Jessica Simpson, right? And also, he was dating Kim Kardashian. Those are the biggest stars, like sex symbols. In college. In, in college. He was more famous than the people playing Come on, bro. in the like, league. Some of a lot about? of them. What are you talking about? Man, that motherfucker had star power. But you walk up in the club, man, I'm the man. Hold on, hold on, Reggie Bush. Reggie man, Bush. Yeah. It not only it's not who and what he was doing, it was where he did it too. In, in Hollywood. In La La Land. <laughs> La. LA. La La. You dig what I'm saying? And for anybody to know the Coliseum, bro, Coliseum was the Coliseum. Sim, yeah. And take it a step further. Reggie Bush's impact was felt around the nation. Mm-hmm. Because being in the, the Pac-12, the conference that they was in, mm-hmm. those games come on late on the yeah, East Coast. that's true. 10, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Like, people were watching this guy cook. Cooking up, too. Chef Boy D. I'm trying to tell you. Bro. Ain't your mama. <laughs> <laughs> cooking. Cooking. And I'm like, bro, let's – Let's stop with the bullshit. Like, Come on now. Get them so in my message to the Heisman would be this. Look, it ain't like I'm going to stand on and say, I ain't going to come back. Like, and to the NCAA, too. To, like, bro. <laughs> what you got to tell him, Bob? That infraction happened off. That that had no merit to what his performance on the field was. Mm-hmm. Let's keep everything. Let's keep the man thing the man thing. Did that infraction help him have an extra advantage of running faster? Nope. Being stronger, no nope. catching better. Mm-mm. So, what are we really talking about? What are we talking about? Get a man back his shit. Come on, because what you would have gave yours up? You gonna need an army. <laughs> you would have gave him your little league trophy. You want a trophy <laughs> back? Days of I don't got it. <laughs> I ain't shit. <laughs> Mom, what? What the hell is the trophy? At? I don't know. Pop, what you want, boy? What the hell? I don't know either. Tell him to kick some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't like me anyway. <laughs> so y'all trying to search for some, trying to find this eyes, man. Shit. Yeah, you about. trying to go get that motherfucker back from me. Bullshit. Shit. I created myself on NCAA <laughs> a thousand times. But you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So when Johnny Manziel makes a stance like that, Bro, he knows the real. Everybody knows the real. Everybody, yeah. every true football player, every true athlete knows the impact of Reggie Bush. Facts. And that motherfucker was him. I like that Hemothy. And he made it look so good. Like this motherfucker was dead legging and hezzying and you know, one sleeve. He had everybody with the damn yeah, yeah. the six one nine. Like, bro, like that shit, that impact right there, bro. Everybody was wearing five. Right. Everybody wanted to be Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. God dang. Yeah. So, like, let's, bro. I'm standing on the table. With that being said, listen, we looking for uh, some people to uh, bring my vision to light. They can have the Heisman House. We want to create a Ratchet Heisman house. I know, Peg. I shouldn't say it, but shit. Reggie, we, when we create it, you more than have, In our eyes, the real ones know yeah. you still a Heisman. Still in there. Uh, See what I'm saying? You start talking about, bro, it's some misfits. It's some real. Heisman misfits. It's some real motherfuckers <laughs> who won that prestigious award that they will hate to say. And when you look at the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and the 70s Heisman Trophy winners, that shade was a little different than the 90s and the 2000s and the 2010s. And and like, shit. They started getting them in now. I'm trying to tell you. Trying to tell you, bro. (laughs) So, come on now. Reggie Bush, bro. I'm going to keep fighting for you, bro. Johnny Manziel, that is very honorable for him to kind of use his platform to bring light to a situation, too. Um, and that's pretty cool, man. So, that's that. Everybody good? Anything else? All hearts and minds, minds are clear. clear. The doors of the church are now open. Yeah, y'all come on down to get prayed for. Lanice, you all right? You good? She still asleep, y'all. Yeah. <sighs> 
Shout out to everybody from New Orleans. As y'all call it, the boot. The boot. And there you have it for this week's episode of Fourth and One. Catch us each and every week. Same place, same channel. Uh huh. Make sure you like. Okay. Make sure you share. Uh huh. Make sure you comment. Uh huh. But most of all, can it? Make sure you subscribe. Yes, sir. You dig it, Bazan. Subscribe. -y. And uh, as I always end things here at Fun. Ooh. Ooh. And as I always end things at Fourth and One. Come on now. Get it done now. You gotta have it. Gotta have it. Gotta have it, sports. One finger. Uh huh. 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 One pinky. Uh huh. One finger. Uh huh. One pinky. Uh huh. One finger. Uh huh. Woo 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 woo. Ha One finger. One pinky. One thumb. All together. One love. Yippee! Yeah.